Ever wondered how game developers create those breathtaking open worlds with lush landscapes, vibrant foliages, and winding roads? In this video, I'm going to show you step by step how to build your own stunning environment in Unreal Engine from scratch. Whether it's for a game, animation, or just for fun, at the end of this tutorial, you'll have the tools to bring your visions to life. So let's jump in. Welcome back everyone to Dressosa Studios. In the last tutorial, we covered the basics of Unreal Engine, from downloading the engine to navigating the editor. Today we're taking things a step further by diving into level creation. In this video, we'll start by creating a brand new level, creating a beautiful landscape and designing a custom material to bring it to life. Then we'll add dynamic foliage, realistic grass and even carve out a road to create a scene that feels natural and immersive. Whether you're a beginner or just looking for to expand your Unreal Engine skills, this tutorial is packed with tips and tricks to help you create stunning environments. Let's get started. First, I'm going to create a folder and name it New World. And into that folder, I'm going to create a new level asset and name this L underscore New World. Open the level up and you're gonna see nothing but blank space over here. Now we're gonna create our landscape with a height map or a height map texture. I'm gonna search height map in the Google and I'll show you a website from where you can find good quality landscape textures. Head to the third search result and here you can find lots of good landscape height maps. I'm gonna use an example from here and select the second one. After that, it's gonna download a zip file which you need to extract. Here I have already extracted my file. So I'm just gonna go ahead and navigate to the folder. Always remember to use the gray texture. I'm gonna go to the landscape section from the selection menu. As we are creating the landscape from the height map, I'm gonna go to import from file and select our height map from height map file. From there, you're gonna see a vague landscape shape. After that, I'm going to increase the z-axis of the landscape to 500. Now once that's done, hit import and your landscape's ready. Next. I'm gonna add some lighting to our scene and don't forget to hit the save every once in a while. Now I'm gonna navigate to my place actors and bring out the directional light and skylight. Also check the box of real time capture of the skylight. Next I'm gonna go to VFX and drag out post processing volume, sky atmosphere, volumetric clouds and the exponential height fog. Keep in mind that these are the basic components for lighting. Now we're gonna create the material. I'm gonna create a new folder called materials and inside that I'm gonna create a material asset and name it M underscore landscape. Also with that I'm gonna right click on the material and create a material instance and name it mi underscore landscape next selecting the landscape i'm gonna apply the material instance of the material i just created and your scene or landscape should look like this next we're gonna open up the material and check on the box for use material attributes we're gonna need that down the line we're gonna use the material attributes because all of our textures attributes will be combined into one place so it will be easier for us next we're gonna go and browse for our textures to use in our landscape i'm gonna go ahead to the fab and search for grass also to use the free assets you're gonna need to go to the price section and click on the free 
checkbox in here you will see a lot of materials you can select any of them as you like i chose this grass material also as we're gonna create a road so i selected a few others like this dried grass this soil dirt and also this soil sand Next, I'm gonna navigate to my textures folder of the materials that I just downloaded and sort them in the folder I just created new world. Create a folder called textures in there and move the downloaded textures onto that. Next, I'm gonna rename all the texture files that I just copied over here to keep things simple and easier. I'm gonna name the albedo of each textures as T for textures underscore the texture name like here, dried grass and lastly underscore A for albedo. So it turns out to be T underscore dried grass underscore A. Just like that, I'm gonna use all of the texture name like that and just change the suffix of them. As for the dirt, I'm gonna use T underscore dirt underscore A for albedo, T underscore dirt underscore H for height map, T underscore dirt underscore N for normal map, and T underscore dirt underscore ORM for occlusion, roughness, and metallic. Now I'm gonna name all of them accordingly. Next, I'm gonna bring in my textures onto my material one by one. Now, I'm gonna change the sampler source from texture asset to wrap. That wrap helps the texture to repeat itself and is really scalable. Next, I'm gonna organize my textures. Now I'm gonna bring in a make material attribute node to create all the materials attribute one by one for each type of textures. As for the yellow like texture that you'll see in the blueprint wrap that we named the ORM, it stands for occlusion, roughness and metallic. Make sure to use the RGB channels from the output node of the texture in the blueprint. For this particular ORM texture, the three separate textures are combined into one texture in its three different channels. Now I'm gonna do this for all of my textures. Next, I'm gonna pull the pin from my output of make material attributes and search for named reroute nodes. This helps us to organize our workflow. Now I'm gonna create the reroute nodes for all of my texture types and give them an appropriate color. Also folks, don't forget to hit the save all button every once in a while. From here, I'm gonna create a landscape coordinate node and I'm gonna press M, left click on the blueprint to create a multiply node. Next, I'm gonna add a scalar parameter by holding S and left clicking on the blueprint and connect the output of the multiply node to all of the UVs of my texture. I'm gonna name this scalar parameter to my according texture name and call it texture size of that particular texture. Next, I'm gonna bring in the landscape layer coordinates node and create four layers. I'm gonna name each of them accordingly. Also, keep all of their blend type to LB weight blend. 
now i'm gonna bring in all my named redock nodes and connect them to the layer i just created next i'm gonna hook my output of the landscape layer blend node to my material attributes hit save and your landscape should look like this now we're gonna go to the landscape from the selection menu and to the paint tab and at the layers section you're gonna need to click on the create layer from assigned materials tab now we're gonna create weight blended layers it's gonna create some asset files over to the folder where our landscape is Once that's done, always remember to hit save guys. From here, I'm gonna go to the foliage mode. Now I'm gonna navigate to my foliages folder, which I already downloaded beforehand. In this case scenario, I have downloaded the European Hornbeam from the Fab Epic Games Marketplace. Next, we're gonna select all our foliage and drop into all right before doing any of those you're gonna need to select all your foliages and right click go to nanite and enable their nanite settings that way we can have our foliages optimized and run smoothly in unreal engine now we're gonna select all our foliages and drop them into the foliage section Play with these two options, the paint density and brush size so that you can understand the paint density and paint the foliage however you like or how dense you like. I'm going to try and test my settings. Now before you go into any further, let's look at a phenomena which happens in the real world. You see, when the big trees form, they always tend to stand tall and the smaller ones or the grasses, they always tend to keep their normal based on the landscape. But for the big trees, they always stand tall based on the world normal. So to fix that, we're going to select all the big trees and scroll down onto the details or settings tab and turn off the check for align to normal and leave the small plants as it is. And just like before, I'm going to turn on the nanite first and save them. Once that's done, I'm going to navigate to my grass and select all of them and drag them in. Also, like before, I'm going to try and test out my paint density and brush size to get a better sense. Once again, do not forget to hit save once in a while. Once that's done, we can go into the forest and get a better look if it's alright. Now I'm going to try and change the light direction, which you can do with holding Ctrl plus L and moving your mouse. All right, next to carve a road, we're gonna need to erase some foliages for the road. To do that, I'm gonna go to my foliage tab from the selection menu, hold all my trees and grasses and press shift and click to erase them. Once that's done, I'm going to my landscape tab from the selection menu and onto the paint, I'm going to select a different paint layer and just paint on the road. I'm going to use the smooth function to smooth out the paint a little bit so that it doesn't come out as harsh as it was. Now the scene is almost ready. Next I'm going to tinker with the lighting a bit. We already have a whole dedicated video for the lighting and for cinematography as well. You can check out right here. For me, I'm going to check some boxes, play with some values and see what works for me. And this is it. 
And this is how you create a beautiful landscape with custom materials, foliages, and road in Unreal Engine. I hope this tutorial helped you take your environment design skills to the next level. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss our next tutorial. Got questions or ideas for future videos? Drop them in the comment box below. I'd like to hear from you. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time at Dressosa Studios.